Let's knock out a stoned house punch list. I've got four different interior doors that are sticking up top, so we're going to plane them down about an eighth of an inch. See how I got a nice gap on the left here, but then up top it's real tight. I mean, I love a tight gap, but... I love flower doorknobs. <laughs> flower knobs. Oh my God, you're so annoying, Tabitha. Can I have a juice box? I've never seen these types of hinges before, and if you think I'm removing all the screws, you are located outside of your brain. So I'm hoping this pen comes out nice and easy. I take my Ryobi door hinge pin remover, and then you can just tap, 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 a root. A little tap, a tap, tappy. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to shave about an eighth of an inch off the top so the door won't stick. So I take out my hand planer. It's got this sharp blade on there. <laughs> you thought I was going to do that manually. You're so silly. <laughs> Slap the door back in. Now we got some gappage. Just need a little touch-up paint on there. We got this chair right over here. It's missing some because the wall was blown out into a half wall. So I'm going to reclaim some of that and put it over there. I'll remove this mud and sand it. And then we're going to scrape down all these high spots in preparation for the mud. And then we'll slap a first coat on there just like that. I'm using five-minute mud. Here's my reclaimed. I kept the return end on it. Cut it to length and then slap it in there. Get it shimmed up a little bit. Nail it in. And then we're going to put some Bondo over top of that. Sand her down. And then after you sand it, it kind of looks like that. And then we're going to caulk the top and the sides and bottom. And then Zach will come along behind me and do touch-up paint. Got a little bit of stain here for this spot on the floor. And after two coats, it's going to look kind of something like this. And what are you going to do? That's what I was told to do. Sand down the first coat of mud, apply a second coat of mud. And while that dries up, we'll go to the back of the house. We've got this cable that was removed and left this hole in this metal trim here. And the owner had some extra pieces. So I took one of them, Tracy old guy, and just cut it to match. And then slapped it in there like that. And the window was like, did you just flash me? And then back in the kitchen, I got to put some quarter round down after they did the tile, after I installed all that baseboard. So I got to go grab my seven and a quarter inch compact miter saw, smallest one I could find. And then this is also the smallest miter saw stand I could find. Nice, compact. Slap my saw in there, and I got a 62 finish blade on it. We're going to cut some quarter round. <laughs> And here it is all slapped in. I threw a couple of returns on there on the sides. And in the kitchen cabinets, they removed the toe kick when they did the tile floor. And it was crusty anyways. So the owner said he wants this self-stick vinyl wall base in black. Just make it easy and slap it on. It's too tall to go right here. So I got to take my straight edge and my utility blade and cut off about seven-eighths of an inch. I am the rubber ninja. Teach me your ways, sensei. Now I'm cheating a little bit. I throw a couple staples on the end because this is a rental property and I don't want this shit to come off. Here we go. A little couple staples right there on the end. You can take your utility blade and just trim it nice and flush where the fridge is going to go. And then you slap it all in and it looks good from six feet away. On to the next house!